got another exam question walkthrough for A level chemistry. So this is number seven in the equilibrium playlist. And the question covers a KP calculation, some questions on Le Chatelier's principle, and then it finishes off with an ideal gas equation calculation. Questions suitable for all of the major exam boards. And as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video, if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So I call this type of calculation an ice calculation. So initial change and equilibrium. So the first thing I'm gonna do, you see I've already done it, is populated with the initial moles of each uh, chemical. So we've got six moles of NO2 at the start, and obviously we won't have any product, any N2O4. And then we're told the equilibrium mixture contains 5.4 moles of NO2. So we'll just stick 5.4 down there. So that means there's been a drop in moles of the NO2, very small drop of 0 0.6. So I'll just put minus 0 0.6 there. And then we'll apply that mole ratio across. So if 0 0.6 moles of NO2 has, has been used, then the amount of N2O4 that's going to be produced will be half that. So that's going to go up uh, by 0 0.3 to 0.3 because it started at zero. So we've got our equilibrium moles now. So next thing we do is work out the total moles at equilibrium. So that's obviously gonna be 5.7 moles. And then we need to work out our mole fractions. So that's the moles of each gas at equilibrium divided by the total moles. So there's my two mole fractions there. Just be careful you don't sort of round this too early. Ideally, keep the full number in your calculator. Uh, I've just gone for three significant figures. That'll be totally fine there. Um, you can do a little check if you want there. These two should add up to one, and they do. So that's all good. So the next thing we need to do is work out the partial pressures of each of these gases. So that's just the mole fraction times the total pressure which we're told in the question is five atmospheres. So there's my two partial pressures and another quick check you can do here is they need to add up to five and they do. So we're good to go with the um, KP expression now and then we can put these numbers in and work out the KP value. So there's the KP expression, just be careful with brackets. I don't bother with brackets for KP because the, there's no danger then of putting square brackets in by accident, which would be totally wrong. So we've got the partial pressure of N2O4 on the top divided by the partial pressure of NO2 squared on the bottom. There's my partial pressures in. Remember to square that one. So the three significant figures, it's coming out at 0 0.0117. I've deliberately left the units um, till the end so I can just quickly explain the units. So if we think back to the KP expression, uh, all these partial pressures are in atmospheres. So we've got ATM on the top but we've got ATM squared on the bottom. And obviously the ATM on the top will cancel with one of the ones on the bottom. And so we're left with ATM to the minus one for the units. So moving on to the next part, I've copied over the information about the equilibrium. I'm gonna break this answer down into the three parts because there's uh, three marks going for it. So the first thing we'll talk about is what's the temperature, what's a higher temperature going to do to this equilibrium system. Well, you can see the forward reaction's exothermic because that negative delta H. And so a higher temperature is going to actually favour the reverse reaction and send the equilibrium over to the left. Obviously, it's going to drop the amount of N2O4 um, produced. And then if we move on to higher pressure, we've got to look at the numbers of moles of gas on each side of the equilibrium. So we've got two moles of gas on the left, and we've only got one mole of gas on the right. So a higher pressure is going to favour the side with the fewest moles. So it's going to send the equilibrium over to the right. It's obviously counteracting this first uh, temperature effect. And then for the final mark, all we need to say is something like, we don't know which effect is more significant. Moving on to the final part of the question, nothing to do with equilibrium this, just a straightforward ideal gas equation. 
So we've got the ideal gas equation here. We're rearranging for moles, so it becomes N equals PV over RT. And just quickly talk about the unit conversions. This is where the mistakes tend to be. So the pressure of 101 kilopascals, we've got to put that into pascals, so it's 101,000. Um, the volume can't be in centimetres cubed, it needs to be in metres cubed. I just put a times 10 to the minus 6 after the number of centimetres cubed, and that puts it straight into metres cubed. Um, gas constant, obviously, is on your data sheet. And the temperature, we can't use degree C. We've got to put it into Kelvin. So we add 273 under that, and it goes to 348. So that's given us a moles value of 2.58. The dot, dot, dot just means I'm keeping the full number in my calculator times 10 to the minus 3. So we can work out the MR now, just mass over moles. So you can see the molar mass comes out at 108. So for the molecular formula, it's a bit of trial and error really. So you can see I've just got uh, multiples of nitrogen and multiples of oxygen in terms of their MRs. So we're looking for a combination of nitrogen oxygen that's going to give us this 108. And the only combination that will do that is two nitrogens, 28, and five oxygens at 80. So they combine, obviously, to give that 108. So the molecular formula is N2O5. So I hope that was helpful. I've done hundreds of these exam question walkthroughs now on lots and lots of topics for A-level chemistry. There's just some of them on the screen, all in separate playlists. So please check those out. And if you haven't already subscribed, why don't you consider subscribing to the channel so you know exactly when I've made a new video. Okay then, cheers, bye.